today I'm filming a video that I've literally wanted to film so forever for you guys. And basically, I'm just going to show you guys a Soul Cycle Studio and what to expect if it's like your first class or if you're a beginner because I know it can be intimidating. I know I was scared like going into it and people say things like, oh, it's a cult or like if you're not in shape, like you can't come. Like it's literally the most like welcoming, like non-judgmental experience you will see. But I'm just going to take you guys through like checking in, getting your shoes, like getting your bike set up, your locker, the whole thing. So let's get it. <laughs> Okay, so basically you'll come in and you'll sign in like over here. Usually there's like a sheet for your class and it'll be like your name next to the bike. You'll sign in and oh, I wanted to make sure I mentioned this early on because I know this happens for people that are under 18. So basically if you're watching this and you're under 18, I know that you actually have to come and have a waiver signed with you and like your parent just for like legal reasons because I know like my cousin like People will come and then you just get into trouble because you can't even like take the class if you're under 18. So just make sure you know that. If you're like 18 and above, you would just sign like a little waiver. It takes like two seconds. And then like I said, you like sign your name next to your bike just so that they know you're signed in. And I know before a class, it's, is it about three minutes before? Four. Four minutes before? There was a sign. Yeah, you have to make sure you sign in like four minutes before or they'll like give away your bike. Or you can call if you're running late, like which always happens to me. <laughs> Um, and then you'll get your rental shoes if you don't have spinning shoes. So basically, SoulCycle just has a bunch of rental shoes and you'll just tell them like what size shoe you have and they'll set you up. And rentals are an extra $3 because I know people ask that a lot. So it's just like another $3 added to whatever the price of the class is. And for pricing of classes, it kind of depends on like the area of the U.S. that you're in. So in Boston, it's 30 30. 30. Okay, it's 30. But then I know once you get out to like the Hamptons, it'll be something crazy like 40 or 42. In New York, it might be like 36, 30. It really just depends where you are, but it's always around like 30, between like 30 and 40. And then the ones in like Southern California, I want to say are 30 as well. But yeah, so basically somewhere in there. And like I said, you'll just pay an extra three for shoes. And then now I want to say water is an extra four. I'll give you a water bottle, but that's why I just always make sure I bring like a reusable water bottle. That's just like the easiest and it can go right on your bike. So I usually just bring my hydro flask or I'll bring like a swell. So I think that's everything for up here. You'll get your shoes, you're good to go. Or if you're like me, you have spin shoes because basically I was coming like all the time and it made sense to just buy spin shoes because instead of like renting them so much, I just have my own now. And I'll get into the shoes because I got a lot of questions about them. I have two different pairs because you can use two different types of spin shoes on the SoulCycle bikes. There's like the Delta cleat and the SPD cleat. I think that's what it's called. <laughs> we'll get into it. That's like details. But this is the SoulCycle Studio. What to expect. Um, they all pretty much look like this, but it'll be like variations, obviously, on like the location or like how big of a space it is. I feel like this one's kind of on the smaller side. Um, as opposed to like Back Bay or like even Chestnut Hill is pretty small too, but we're in Boston right now, so this is the Beacon Hill Soul Cycle Studio. And yeah, it's just like what a pretty typical Soul Studio looks like. You have your lockers, and I won't get like too into it, but I know people can get confused. I always mess it up all the time and forget my combination, so then you just ask the staff and they'll open it for you with your key. But basically, it's just like a normal locker. What's really cool is you can charge your phone while you're in the class, so sometimes I'll bring a charger um, and do that because my phone's always dying. And they have little instructions in here too, but I know it can be <laughs> like confusing, so literally, the staff are so sweet here too. Like they'll help you if it's your first time because I know it can be intimidating, but literally you just like put in your code, go like that, and then remember it, put it in again, and do it with that your pennies. Okay, then these benches are here because you're gonna need to like switch your shoes for your soul class. So basically, this is what I do. And okay, let's just talk about shoes right now. So these are my soul cycle shoes that I bought a while ago um, because I don't even think they sell these anymore, but these are just like the typical sole shoes. These are still the ones. If you guys rent shoes, these will be the shoes that you get. And I just always liked them for a lot of reasons. They're really like secure feeling um, and like stiff, but I like that because I feel like I'm like on the bike and I'm not about to like fly off. And then these are the Delta cleats. I wanna make sure I'm saying this right. I'm pretty sure. You guys can tell by the way they look at those. These are these like bigger type of cleats. And then I also just recently got these TM shoes. And so other spin shoes might have this kind of cleat. 
which I want to say is SPD. I might be mixing them up, but you guys can just tell like big versus small. So I just started trying these out and I would say there's pros and cons to both. It just depends on like the type of ride you want, the feel you want. These to me feel a lot more like flexible and these are a lot more stiff. But like I said, I like the stiff. And as you can tell, this cleat's a lot bigger than this one. And these being smaller to me, just makes it feel a little bit more unstable. Um, but then there's people like Louisa rides in these every single time and she's like, I don't notice a difference at all. And another pro to these is that you walk around normal because the cleats are like hidden in the bottom. But these, you're gonna, you're gonna walk around and they like click, so you'll see. But that's another thing, make sure you always bring socks, people, or you'll have to buy theirs, which is like fine, but it's just more money. I think I've forgotten shoes so many times, and or socks, and you just don't wanna do that, especially if you're in like the rental shoes. Like, a lot of other people have been wearing those, so just make sure that you bring socks. So these are what these are like, but as you can tell, <laughs> they like click around, so that's just how these cleats work. But then, like I said, the smaller ones are hitting, so you would just walk around like normal sneakers. Um, but for me, especially like coming off an ACL injury, that's why I prefer these ones, just because I feel a little bit more stable. Okay, now before you go into a class, this is fun, we're just going through this together. I need my water. Okay, so you're gonna put everything in here. And you want to make sure you don't have your phone in the studio. I remember, I think like the first time I brought it in with me, and they're like, no, you don't need that. Like, you don't want that. Maybe we'll just take this off here. I'm hot sure. anyway. So, also, that's another good thing to talk about what you wear in a soul cycle class. Because I think the first time I might have just gone in like Nike running shorts. But I would recommend leggings. And you can do like the cropped leggings if you get too hot and like the full length ones. But yeah, I'll do like crop leggings, long leggings. Or more recently, I started getting like the biker shorts, but like overall, I prefer leggings. And then I would say just like tight fitting clothes are good. I mean, you can wear, like you wear like a t-shirt, um, but not something that's like too loose. It's gonna like get caught on your handlebars or something. I always just wear a sports bra leggings because that's what I'm used to. That's what like a lot of people wear in the class just because it gets like so hot in there. And I kind of feel like it differs between studios, like what people typically wear. I feel like here, sports bra leggings is really normal. I feel like other places people wear more like shirts, like just tight like tank tops. So it's kind of like whatever you're comfortable with. Taylor would never wear like a sports bra and leggings and just wears like a long, like tight tank top. So yeah, it's just like whatever you're comfortable with. Come with me. <laughs> okay, wait, this is good to show. So. After your class, if you rented shoes, we'll just throw them in here. Make sure if you have your own shoes that you don't throw them in there because I've done that so many times. And then there's going to be a towel on your bike because you're going to be dripping in sweat. So that's where that goes after it's all dirty. This is where you fill up your water. Oh, this is really cute. This is like some rules. No texting. Yeah, you don't have your phone in there. You're not talking. Oh, make sure you have clean clothes. Like, I don't know why you put it. Be kind, and it's like a pack. That's another thing. I feel like people feel so intimidated with Soul Cycle, and I get it. Like when I first came, I was like, oh, I don't know if it's for me. And honestly, my first like three classes, I was like, this is so hard. I don't know if I like it. But you really like get into it and learn to love it, right, Max? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So then this is what this little area looks like. Basically, you have all sorts of fun things. There's like deodorant if you want to do that before class, like sometimes if you're like, oh I forgot, I don't wanna like, you know, smell. Um, hair ties, Q-tips, all sorts of fun stuff. They have it all stocked, which is so nice. There's like really nice face wash, and like, if you wanna shower and stuff after. Um, yeah, more deodorant, da da da, hair ties. I feel like, I, like all my hair ties at home are probably from SoulCycle, just the amount of times I've come like, without a hair tie. Da da da, towels, and then you have shower, shower. There's like bathrooms here. Let's go. And one of these, you can see. I would say this is like a typical shower. Those are like the bigger, I think like handicap accessible ones. Um, but this is the shower. This is where you have to run after class. If you have to shower after class, you better get your butt out of there. Don't do stretch, skip stretch, because or else you're going to be waiting in line for the showers with everybody else that's trying to shower. They have you all stocked with a shampoo, conditioner. Da 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 da. Yeah. <laughs> And then, okay, I think that's good. I think you guys get the gist 
out here. And obviously, if you're new, just tell the staff. Just be like, it's my first time, and they will literally get you acquainted with everything. Oh, this is so fun. I can mm -hmm. film in here. I've never been able to really film in here because obviously, when there's riders in here, and I'm not normally allowed to like bring my camera in here, and it's like dark and everything. But this is like a typical spin studio, like Soul Studios. Like I said, very based on location. So this one's a little bit more of like a rectangle, like skinny but long. Some are more square, like the back bay location here. Really depends. Some are like massive when you get to some studios in like New York or California or whatever. So this is what a Soul Studio looks like. Okay, also, sorry if my hair is freaky in this video. I honestly went to Seoul like two hours ago, threw some dry shampoo in it so I could run back to the studio to film this video. So, like I said, typical Seoul room. And let's say I'm bike three and I'm like, oh, there's bike three. Just look on the front of the bikes because they'll always have the numbers. I know sometimes I notice in class people will be like, oh, how do I know which bike is mine? So just remember your number and you'll see it in the class. Okay, so I'm bike three, put my little water bottle down. Your towel, I like that all the bikes have towels. It's so nice, they're gonna be hooked up. Some studios actually, I wanna say it's the one in the Hamptons, come with water bottles on all of them. That's why like the class is also so expensive, man. It's just the Hamptons. Um, but just recognize that or not, because then I remember I came to Boston and I was like, oh my God, there's not a water bottle on my bike. Like I don't have one. Okay, then you're gonna set up your bike and for someone like me who's been honestly probably over 300 times, I know by now, but if you're new, literally tell the staff, like I said, they'll like measure your body and all sorts of things, see how tall you are, da da da, like where your hips are, to like measure you for the bike, but basically you're just gonna move the bike around for how long you want it to be. So I always ride with this, in case you're one at like a seven and a half, because I'm pretty tall. <laughs> okay, there we go, so I put that all the way back, and you wanna make sure these are like clipped all the way down, or this is like all the way tightened. All right, then handlebars and move this forward. Mm -hmm. And this actually looks good. So you wanna make sure it's really tight. And I feel like bikes differ on different studios now. But they used to not have these like twisty things. It used to all just be like clippy things like this. Like I said, that'll help you. Okay, so then your feet are gonna clip in. I don't know how to show this like easily but basically you just get it like lined up in there you're gonna need help it's not easy right max you mm -hmm. need help and then you're just gonna push down like that and you'll hear it clip in for the spd cleats you don't really hear it clip in as much because it's like a smaller cleat and those actually go on the other side of the pedal so those go right there if you can tell so yeah if you were wondering that's just like how the soul cycle bikes are, but different bikes at different spin studios and stuff will be different. Sometimes they only have SVD cleats or Delta cleats, it really depends. Also, I feel like I'm gonna miss things in this video. If you guys have questions, obviously leave them down below and I will answer them for you. I just want this to be as like informative and helpful as possible. So getting out of the bike after your first class, after you're covered in sweat and really tired is gonna be hard. And if you're new, literally just unclip your shoe, like unvelcro your shoes and just leave them on the pedal because the staff will take care of it for you. But if you want to know how to unclip, you literally, I feel like people don't do it because it like seems like you're breaking the bike or something, but you literally have to kick out with your heel really hard. So you're just going to go like this, like that, and just unclip. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be careful with my knee. Okay, then, well, let's talk about weight. So there's a lot of questions about like the weight part of the class, which I'll get into. But basically, all the bikes in the front row, I think, always come with threes. And maybe the first two rows, yeah. And then the back two rows have twos. It depends on the studio, da da da. But typically, you'll have twos or threes. If you want to be a crazy psycho like me and think you can do the fives, you literally will just come over here. There's more weights. Even if you're in the front and you want twos and you don't want threes, you can switch them out, do whatever you want. So you're just going to go like that. Yay, yeah, my five pound weights. Ready to struggle. <laughs> and then you just put them on your bike. Behind your seat, they go in these little holders if you're wondering where your weights are, where they go. Now, we are going to the podium. So I get a million questions every day. What is the podium? What's riding? Put them to the podium. Da, da, da. I'll get into that. But basically, this is where the instructor is the whole class. And so like, hi, I'm Sarah, welcome to Seoul. That type of thing. And then she'll be like leading you through the whole class like doing the music, like their laptop goes right there with the music. 
Um, they control like the lights. These are the lights back here. So your instructor will like move the lights around like that. So these are obviously the lights up here on the podium. So like during the more like in your field, slow songs before the last song, we'll just like turn off all the lights. It'll be quiet. You can just like do your thing. Um, right now, I'll just have them on so you can see. So I'm grabbing my weights, putting them back here. And then, yeah, I'll just show you guys some like typical things to expect. Basically, let's talk about writing podium. So instructors are always up here. They're instructing, doing the music, the lights, while writing. So obviously, it's a lot. And sometimes, it's typically when they're like really tired, injured, stuff like that, they'll ask riders to ride up here for them. So they'll be the ones like walking around in the class. They'll still be leading the class like verbally. But then when you're riding podium for an instructor, you're the one that's riding up here and you're just like riding for them because they can't, if that makes sense. So that's what riding podium is. Like I'm not saying anything, I'm doing like everything in the class that they're doing, but just like on my left foot, not on my right foot. Because it's like, they're following me like in your image. If that makes sense. So when you're in the class, typically, the whole class will be like on your right foot, riding to the beat of the song. Sometimes instructors will like mix it up and have you ride on the left foot for a song. So pretty much instructors are always riding on their left because it's like opposite, like I was saying. Let's put up my hair. <laughs> Typically, so I know people were asking about like the format of a soul class. So instructors will mix it up, um, but typically it goes something like the first song will be like getting into it, like warming up like a jog. Then you might have a quick one right after it or a hill. It like depends on the instructor. But the classes, I would say, are typically broken up into like three-ish kind of types of songs. So there will be like a jog and then that is like warming up like normal getting into it and then there will be a hill that's like slower and heavy like resistance really on and then there will be like resistance almost all the way off like running like almost sprinting type of songs maybe I can even play some songs and show you guys like examples of those but before we get into that it also depends on the instructor like the whole class really depends on the instructor it can really vary based on the instructor but there's like hand positions that you can know some instructors won't talk about them, some really will. So this is like first position, your butt's gonna be back, your core is gonna be like in tight, and your arms are gonna be like this, and you'll just be like pedaling like this. First position sitting. Typically, most of the class, Max knows, will be up out of the saddle. So you'll be like this, and this is third position, where your hands are all the way out, your hips are back, and you wanna make sure your hips are back as far as you can be, because if you're like this, that's just not what you want. Want to be back here using your core, using your glutes. You're like barely any weight is on your hands. Like you could like lift your hands up, you know? Okay. Then this is second position right here. You might be sitting in second position or up. It really depends. So first, second, third. And then you'll go here if you're doing like push ups or if you're doing like tap back, push up. <laughs> All right, so this is your resistance knob right here. Good to know. Like Max was saying in his first class, I was like, is there anything you wish you knew? And he's like, I wish I knew that you're gonna be like moving around the resistance and playing with it, depending on the song. So in the beginning, the instructor will probably have you take it all the way off until you hit zero. And then you'll put a couple turns on until you start to feel something. So like right now, my legs are like moving. I don't really feel any resistance. Usually I'll put like three or four turns on maybe five this bike feels different all the bikes are different but now I feel something and I can come up and out of the saddle so when they say up and out of the saddle this is your saddle <laughs> and this is up and out okay so like I said the first song will probably be like a warm-up jog I've had some classes where instructors will have you start like in first position getting into it so it really depends um, one of my favorite songs to start with I'm not an instructor but this would be the song I would start with every class. A lot of instructors do. Indian Summer. We'll just play it on my phone so I can hear. <laughs> okay, ready? So this is like the beat of the song. This is so funny. And now I'm sweating. <laughs> so we'll just ride to the rhythm of the whole song. Obviously just follow the instructor, especially if you don't have rhythm like Max. And you can't hear <laughs> the beat of the song. Just follow the instructor and basically it's just like a mirror image. So I'm riding on my left, you're riding on your right. That's how it goes. Some typical choreography, I feel like, I don't even know like what it's called, because we just do it, and then like push up, 
the really tough stuff will be like as you're riding around the world, right, Max? Mm -hmm. that is. It'll be like up, middle, back, middle. But it'll be like. <laughs> so it can get like really quick. Or it'll be like two, like that. This is so funny. Or you'll, it, it could be like a slow song, like a, like a hill, and the instructor could have you come back here, and you're just doing like slow crunches. That. Basically just follow your instructor. There's like all sorts of choreography they can do. You can like go shoulders like that. Tap back. Tap back, obviously, is like the biggest soul one. It'll be like, where you just tap your beauty back. Honestly, I don't know if it does anything. It's just like fun to ride to the beat of the song. I know whew, some of the questions I got were like, do you have to like ride to the beat of the song? Or like, is it always like dancey? Is every class like dancey? And yeah, because that's just like how soul is. You're always going to be riding to the beat of the song, like following the instructor, and they'll do the choreography moves. But obviously, if you're new, don't worry about the like arm, upper body stuff. Just worry about like getting the rhythm. Even if that means like a quick song, you have to like sit and not come up out of the saddle. It honestly is like whatever you want to make of it. And so many of the questions are like, um, I haven't done spin before, or like I don't work out that much. I'm not in shape. Can I come? Yes, obviously. You literally get out what you put into it. So like the more resistance you have on, the harder the class is going to be. If you're doing like every beat with the instructor, every arm movement, it's going to be harder than if you take it at your own pace, do your own thing. Like. Just know that a soul cycle class is not that serious. You can do whatever you're comfortable doing or not. And just know, like, after my ACL surgery, four weeks after I came back to a soul cycle class, I sat in that back corner bike, all the way back there, in the back corner, where I felt like nobody could see me. And I sat the whole time and just went like this. I just did my own thing. And if that's all you can do or all you want to do, by all means do it. Because it's just fun coming, like, listening to the music. Or if you think that's not like worth your money, I get it. But do you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. <laughs> okay, this song gets me. So like for a quick song, this is like a song for coming home, right? Freaking tired. <laughs> I just came this morning, I can't do this again. Okay, then like a slow one. Okay, I found an example. So some songs, like the instructor will just make it however they want to make it. So like this could be a slow song, like, you know, like you're just like climbing. So I need more resistance. It really just depends. Okay, so I tried to show you guys as much as like I could in this studio. And if you have any other questions about specifically like in the class, leave them down below. One thing I just remembered that me and Max were talking about is I feel like for my first class, I didn't realize like how dark the class would be. And I haven't really been to other like spin classes, but just know that the lights are gonna be like awful time. So I feel like that's what makes it so not intimidating and like not judgmental. Like people can barely even see you. Like no one cares what you're doing on the bike. They're bringing it by themselves. So don't be worried about that. And yeah, the class is really dark. So that's why you get clipped in when like the lights are still on before the class starts and you get all set up because during the class, it's pretty freaking dark so just keep that in mind so now so many of you guys asked so many questions and we're just gonna go through them so obviously the question is like how's my first class gonna be like am I gonna be able to handle it is it really hard and thinking back to my first class it was obviously very challenging I wasn't like really prepared for it um just know that it's tough but it's not too tough and like if you keep going you'll get used to it and I feel like I didn't realize like what I was saying before with the resistance I thought that it had to be all the way on and that it was just going to be like really hard but to make it easier you can just take the resistance off so that you can like keep up with the pace of the class so I would definitely recommend coming and trying it out and while I don't think it's for everybody I feel like you really can get into it and like realize that you like it after you try it for a while it probably took me like five classes to even realize like oh I can get on the beat if I just take off the resistance a little bit so it just takes some time 
um, but I would really recommend and you just get used to it like after a while. So then this question is about just like spinning shoes in general, which I kind of showed you guys. Some of you were wondering if you could wear like normal sneakers into the class, which you can't just because those pedals just have like the two sides like I showed you with the two different cleats. So you're going to need spinning shoes, but don't worry because you obviously can just rent them from SoulCycle, which I would recommend if you're not going to come that much. And if you're like really avid into SoulCycle or spinning in general, I would just recommend like getting your own shoes. And you don't have to buy like the ones from SoulCycle, like these I got a really long time ago. And then now they have like newer versions that you can buy. You can buy like Shimano ones on Amazon or whatever as long as they just clip into the bike. So is the first class intimidating? I feel like it's a little nerve wracking just because it's new like anything new in life. But um, like not really intimidating because everyone's sweet, everyone like wants to help you be there and is excited for your first class. The instructor might even be like, who's new? Woo! Like it's a fun, exciting thing. And yeah, while it might be intimidating being like, oh, it's my first class, all these people have gone before, whatever, in a little while, you'll be just like them. So don't worry about it. Oh, this question, how is SoulCycle different from Peloton? Obviously different in the way that Peloton is like, you're just on a bike and the instructors are on a screen in front of you and it's just you on a bike. You're not like in a fitness studio, like a class with an instructor. So obviously that's the biggest difference. And I actually just started riding on our Peloton bikes in the gym in my apartment building. Um, I've only gone a few times, but I feel like what I noticed the biggest difference is what I just said. And I feel like those classes are a lot more like sitting most of the class, and then you're up some of the songs, where Soul Cycle is you're up out of the saddle most of the time, like hands out in third, and then you're sitting only like a little bit of the time. So I feel like that's the biggest difference I noticed. This question is, how can I be sure my form is correct? So the instructors will help you, especially if they know it's your first time um, and the staff like at Soul Cycle. but I would just like ask the instructor to like take a look at you or if you just saw me up there, I'm a great example. Just you wanna keep your hips like as back as far as they can go, like glutes engaged, hamstrings, everything, so that you don't like put too much pressure on your arms and it's like mostly in your legs and your core. Um, that's how you can make sure your form is correct. How long do classes last? So, a typical soul cycle class will be 45 minutes long, which is weird because coming into soul for the first time, I was like, oh, that's not that much time at all. Like, it'll be so easy. Trust me, it's not easy. <laughs> and sometimes it can feel like the class drags on for like two years. Um, but they're typically 45 minutes, and then there will be soul survivor classes that are an hour long. And I feel like you don't even notice the 15 minutes difference all that much. Um, but it's just a little bit longer, like a couple more songs in there. And then there will be like some crazy ones like soul challenge classes that are like two hours long. <laughs> um, but the two hour ones will use like two, like two classes. So you buy like a class series. This is good to talk about this too. You buy like a class series. Oh, you're good. <laughs> and then, um, so say you buy like 10 for like a soul challenge class, you would use like two of those is what I'm saying. Um, also, there's not a membership for Soul Cycle. That's another question here. And there's not like a membership, like unlimited a month, anything like that. You basically just buy like per class. And like I said, here in Boston, it's 30 bucks. So if you buy like five, like all together, it could be like a little less expensive. So each class ends up working out to like 28 bucks. So if you buy like more at a time, each class will be a little bit less expensive, but it's not too different. So I feel like normally I would just buy like one class at a time or five. Um, but that's how that works and I wish there was like a membership. They just don't offer that. So that's how that works. Oh, another question is um, Is there like a specific specific class for beginners? And I want to say a really long time ago, like probably three years ago There was a class I went to that was like soul 101 and I think like it was specifically for beginners And they would show you like the arm positions and the class was like a little bit easier I don't even know if that's like offered anymore, but it's typically just like normal soul cycle classes But like I said, don't worry about it. Just go to a normal one the instructor and the staff will help you so do I have to be fit before is it too hard and like I said it's really as hard as you make it I'm sure I've gone sometimes really hungover and I make it easy and I'll like sit in the saddle or like take my resistance all the way off so it's you really just get out like what you put into it and it's not too hard I think anybody can do it even if you're me after ACL surgery sitting in the back corner just sitting pedaling at your own pace the whole time um, so yeah, and you don't have to be fit before. I think one of the best things is there's like so many stories of people that have like never worked out and they'll come to a soul cycle class and you know, they just start their fitness journey there and they can see like how much their body changes and like how happy they become when they can start as little class and like 
a hundred flashes later there is killing it. And I was like, I don't think you have to be before I have to be like this crazy getting with that baby person. Um, is it a full body workout? And some of you were concerned that it wasn't going to work, your upper body. So yes, it's a full body workout. I would definitely say that. And I remember in October when I did like the 30 days in a row, I noticed such a difference in my arms and my core as well. So it's not like just your legs. And um, yeah, obviously it's mostly like quads, hamstrings, like your whole legs, your glutes, um, just being biking. But like like I said, if you're running the right way, your core will be engaged. Like I noticed such a difference in my core if I'm going on versus not. And if you're you know doing the arm weights, obviously it's gonna help tone your arms. And just being like this, I feel like it's using your arms a little bit. So if you don't think it's using your arms enough, then just go up to five pounds. Or some series will even have like eight or tens. This says, is it expensive slash is it worth it? So I guess if it's worth it, it's really up to you. To me it is because I love it and this is gonna get mushy, but to me it's just way more than a workout. It's like honestly a soul experience. Like I can't tell you how many times I've cried in classes and it's not just me, like so many people will go in there and cry. Like instructors can get really, you know, emotional and deep and play some like really cute songs and say some heartfelt things. So I feel like for me, Sometimes, I like never really think of a workout. I think of it as going and just like having fun. And afterwards you're like, yeah, like, that was so fun. And you're just like in the best mood after. So if it's worth it, that's really up to you. And I would say for fitness classes in general, it is expensive, but I feel like you get so much out of it and the studios are so nice with the staff, the instructors. And um, so I feel like it's worth it. And if it's expensive, I guess that's like up to you. But I feel like typically in the fitness world, their classes are priced pretty expensive. This says, is there a certain age you have to be? So like I said in the beginning, because I think it's really important, is 18 and above, you're good. If it's your first time, you'll just sign a waiver. But if you're under 18, just make sure you have a parent come with you the first time, because they're going to have to sign the waiver with you, with you. And if you come all the way to Soul Cycle and you're like 16 or 17, you're just not going to be able to take the class. Um, just for like legal reasons, so just make sure you do that because it makes me so sad when you guys DM me and are like, I drove an hour and I couldn't take my class. So just make sure you have a parent come with you the first time if you're a kid. Because do you double a lot? Asking about doubles. So some people will do like double soul cycle classes, but then obviously you're just paying for both and you'll do like a class back to back. And I would say I used to double a lot and now I haven't at all ever since my knee surgery just because. I don't know if my knee could like handle it. My knee gets really tired and like sore after one as it is. Um, but obviously I think there's like a time and place for doubling. I think it's really fun. And if you're like really into soul cycle and maybe you want to become an instructor or just like want to challenge yourself and see if you can do two in a row if you've really been killing it after one, do it. And I honestly think in doubles, the second one is a lot easier than the first because you're already warmed up and like in the mindset of doing soul. So if you just hop into a second class, your body just keeps going like and it goes by in literally 10 seconds. So I think if you're thinking about if you should do double and you've been going to soul for a while, you really should try it because it's really fun. And Melissa and I have like way too much fun being crazy psychos and doing doubles like all the time last summer. What if I can't can't stay up or can't stay on the beat. Like I said, it's totally fine. And some instructors will be, all instructors are different, like I said, but most of them are like really chill and will be like, especially if it's your first class, you want to sit, take it at your own pace, do it. If you can't stay on the beat, that's okay. I would say just worry about your legs and don't worry about the upper body stuff because you can't, you can't do the legs and the lower body stuff. It's going to be really hard to be doing the push-ups at the right time because your legs aren't on the beat. So just don't worry about it and you'll get there eventually if you keep going. Uh, when should I increase my weights and how do you use the weights on the bike? Oh, that's something I wish I showed mm. on the bike. Okay, so pretend I'm sitting on the bike right now. You grab your weights behind you and then you'll do like slow biceps. That's like a normal one or like quick biceps with the beat. This is weird with no weights right now. It feels so easy. Sometimes you'll turn your arms out. You'll do like up overhead, some of those. You'll do some of these and then you'll do like the triceps so you get all sorts of your arms. What other stuff? Oh, the punches are like really big and tall. What other arms am I? I'm not even seeing that. Oh, sometimes you'll go like all the way up or you'll just hold mm -hmm. it. Those are really rough. Oh, these feel so good. Like after you're doing like holding stuff, it like helps release your shoulders. Some of these. Sometimes we'll do like crazy stuff like that. It's really just up to me, instructors, like how you do the arms. But again, just like riding in the class, it's just to the beat of the song. So it'll be like, with the beat. Um, so that's how you do the arms because, or I guess, so this helps. When you're doing the arm section of the class, you like put on a bunch of resistance and your legs are barely moving, like barely spinning. You're really just focusing on the arms. So you're not usually riding while doing the arms. 
in like once in a while I feel like not as common um like James would always do this instructors will have you keep riding to the beat of the song and you'll have one arm on the bike and then the other one will be like doing the arm as your legs are going have you been in a class like that mm -mm. yeah it's harder but almost easier I feel like it's less hard on your arms because you're kind of like riding while doing it so you're not even focused on like your arm hurting because you're worrying about your legs being on the beat but typically I would say like 80% of the time you're just sitting legs are spinning resistance on your legs are really moving and you're just worrying about the arms so that's how you do arms on the bike and that's like typical moves but obviously just follow your instructor what is podium so that's why I told you the podium is literally just a raised thing on the front of the class and that's how the instructor is up in the front of the class so you can see them like literally like look up at them and watch them do the whole class so you can follow them or like I said if they're not riding up for many different reasons there will be a rider in the class that has done so a million times before like me and can like lead the class is there varying levels of difficulty so yes I would say just really based on the instructor slash like how hard are you trying the class like I said like you can go to an easier or harder instructor and make it as easy or hard as you, if you want. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even like that when people will say like, oh, this instructor's too easy or too hard. Like literally just do you and then it's gonna be as hard or as easy as you make it, you know? But I would say there will be some instructors that maybe have been with so longer or, um, yeah, or just like more, I don't know, maybe do like faster songs in the class. Like there will be instructors that have more runs. So you could say that's like a harder instructor. Um, or like an instructor that's newer and has more slow songs, so that could be like an easier instructor. But like I said, you just get out what you put into it. So I think that's really only where like the levels of difficulty would change, just based on like the instructor, but also how hard you're trying. So just like be honest with yourself. If you say the class was easy, like were you putting as much resistance on as you needed to? This says, is it embarrassing to take a break? No, not at all. I do all the time. <laughs> like if I just did like a really hard run and we're already up on a hill i'm gonna like sit for a sec towel off and drink some water so it's not embarrassing at all you can stop whatever you need to and just chill for a sec like nobody wants you to pass out um this says do i have to sit in the back if i'm new so i would recommend probably like second third fourth row just not the front row because you've never been before um and if you're like with a friend or something that's always fun and you can like follow them and they can help you too but you don't like have to, but I would just recommend just so also there's like people in front of you and you can follow their legs like directly in front of you. Um, and I honestly have brought friends for the first time right in the front row with me and it's really mean, right back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what does it feel like if you're in the front row for the first time? Uh, I felt like people were watching me, but no, I, no one, no yeah, one is. I feel like everybody feels that. You feel so weird. You're like, oh, everybody's watching. Nobody's watching you. They're yeah. watching the instructor and they're worrying mm -hmm. about themselves. So by all means, I really wouldn't recommend bike six for your first time. You can. Mm -hmm. You're just gonna struggle and maybe like throw off the people around you. So it's just like not the best thing. And I would recommend going like more in the back. And at least if you don't want to go in the back, just go in the second row because then you can follow the people in front of you or if you like go more towards the end so you're not throwing off like the whole room around you, um, then you'll get into it and you'll be ready for the front row in no time. So yeah, uh, what exactly is it? <laughs> that was one of the questions. Mm -hmm. Just just spinning class, I feel like I have gone for so long that everything is like second nature to me, but it's a spin class and there's an instructor that's leading it. Um, the class gets pretty hot sometimes, I feel like that's good to know. That's why you're going to be dripping in sweat and it's good to just wear like a sports bra and leggings and it's going to be hot in there and you're going to be literally soaked and even if you think you're not going to be like, oh, it's not going to be that hard, right Max? Mm -hmm. Like Max and all these hockey friends that are like, oh, this is going to be a breeze, no. Like dripping in sweat, like that was the hardest thing ever. So, uh, yeah, spin class, right into the beat of the song, that's what it is. Uh, I don't work out. I don't work out at all. How challenging will it be? If you don't work out at all, I'm sure it will be quite challenging. But like any workout would be, since you haven't in a while. And yeah, you like I said before, you get out what you put into it. So it's only gonna be as challenging as you make it. But if you're trying to follow the instructor, it's gonna be hard. How is it different than a regular workout? So many reasons. Well, obviously, like if you're just working out at the gym alone, you're just like doing your own thing, but this way, like following the instructor, they're telling you what to do. They can get in your face and be like, come on, you can do it. So like, I like the motivation and being in the class with other people. Like, I know it would be so much harder trying to do all of that. Like, on a, like I couldn't even do it up there on a bike alone, but in a class with other people, like everybody motivates you and you're like, oh, 
Max is doing it next to me. I can do it. And it's different because you're in a dark room and there's really loud music and someone yelling at you. It's different for so many reasons, but also different in like a mental, spiritual way. So I feel like a lot of instructors will touch on that and just makes a great start to your day, people. How much are shoes? $3 rentals, like I said, or you can buy them and then they can be however much you want to spend on them. So favorite Boston instructors and why? I don't even want to say this because I'm sure I'll miss some and feel really bad. James was one of my faves. He just went to New York City. I'm sad. Lisa was also one of my faves. She went to New York City. I'm sad. Obviously Maddie, Sarah, Johnny. Oh my gosh, who else am I forgetting? Aaron. Aaron, Annie, all of them. Literally mm -hmm. all of them. There's been like a couple that I haven't been to that I need to go to, but if I've ridden with you in Boston, you're my favorite and I love you, so just know that. Allison here too. She also went to New York. Everybody leaves and goes to New York. It's so sad. But they're all the best. And I love it because everybody's like a different vibe. So there will be a day where I'm like, oh, I just need like Johnny's energy and like to make me laugh and I'll go to his class, you know? Or I'm like, I really want like a coach yelling you know, in my face and I want this to be like an intense workout and I'll go to Aaron. So like you'll get to know like different vibes of different instructors. Class format, like I said, it'll be like a warm up, maybe some hills, some sprints, you'll get to weights, those are towards the end. And typically, towards the end it'll be weights, and then you'll have like one slow song like in your feels, lights off, and then it'll be like go home, sprint, woo, like fun song. So that's typically the end, and then the beginning is just however the instructors want to do it with hills and like, like sprint songs. Or jump. I think that is all. Wow, I had so much to say. If you guys have any questions about Soul Cycle, leave them down below. I want to say a big thank you to Soul Cycle and especially the Beacon Hill Studio for letting me come here and film um, because it's just really sweet. And you guys know how obsessed I've been with Soul for like, what, three, four years? It's like my whole name at this point. And yeah, so if you guys have any questions, leave them down below. I think that is all. Thanks for watching. Hope this helped if you're new to Soul. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Okay, P.S. We didn't talk about the clothing. It's always at the front. It's very tempting. It's quite expensive, so just be careful. We will probably end up buying all of it at some point anyway. And it's so freaking cute. Like, look at this stuff. They'll have, like, Nike Soul Cycle stuff, Lululemon Soul Cycle stuff, own Soul Cycle brand Soul Cycle stuff. So, this is where all the clothes are. And then, if you have everything after you're dripping in sweat and you're going home, make sure you always say thank you to the Soul Cycle staff. <laughs> They're the best when they do everything. You always say thank you. And that's what I always do. Bye. Yeah. Going up the best day ever. <laughs>